Hey folks, this is just a disclaimer to say do not try this at home. This video involves a dangerous and badly built machine which spins at ridiculous speeds and it also possibly involves overloading my train controller. This is for entertainment purposes only, do not try this at home. Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway. It's experiment time again, which means possibly some dangerous things, possibly some accidents. It's all going to be good fun. So this all started with me thinking, model trains and real trains handle very, very differently, don't they? Real trains take ages to speed up and ages to slow down. The reason being that they weigh so much, they're so huge, massive and heavy. They build up a lot of momentum and a lot of inertia, and therefore it takes quite a lot of energy to speed them up and slow them down. With model trains, this is not the case. Because they are so light, there's much less inertia, much less momentum, much less energy involved. So we can speed up our trains basically immediately. And they don't take long to slow down either. If I cut the power, it stops dead. A real train would never do that. A real locomotive could never do that. So I've decided I want to try and find a way to make model trains drive and handle a little bit more like real trains. Now, you can do this with DCC. I mean, some DC, well, most DCC decoders can simulate inertia with a gradual acceleration and deceleration. GageMaster have some controllers which simulate inertia, but those aren't interesting. Well, they are interesting, but they're not video worthy. They're not dangerous. I want to do something a bit more entertaining today. I want to do it physically, not with clever electronics. I want to try and build a machine that does this. And I think I have, I think I've built just the right thing. So let me show it to you, show you some of its features. So the first component is this 100 watt scooter motor. Yes, it's a scooter motor. It's designed to move a person. And would you look at the size of this thing? It is huge. This is the size of a Backman motor from a standard model locomotive. This is what 50 times the size. It's absolutely monstrous. You might be thinking, a 100 watt scooter motor, won't that overload your controller? Well, not exactly, because it's designed for 24 volts. I'm only going to be running it on 12 volts, which means that we're forcing less current through it. Also, it's only going to be drawing 100 watts when there's a person on it. I mean, a person's heavy, that requires a lot of energy. My load for that motor is going to be much less. Let me show you what that is. So it's a dinner plate. Yes, it's a dinner plate which has been clumsily glued and soldered to the top of the motor. And around it, as you can see, I've got some weights. Those are five gram weights. And basically what I've got here is a flywheel. It's not particularly heavy, it weighs just over 200 grams, but it does have quite a wide diameter, which means it should be able to build up quite some momentum. Now, you might already be able to see how this is going to work. Maybe you can see where I'm going with this. If you can't, don't worry, I will give you an explanation as to how this works later on. But that's just the thing, I don't actually know if this is going to work. I did do a 50% speed test with this thing earlier on, and it did not end well. This happened. We got one of the weights flew off the wheel. Luckily, it didn't come in my direction and embedded itself into the wall of fame, which is why I say this is kind of dangerous. I did not want that happening again, which is why now I've taped the weights on so that hopefully they won't come off. But we need to test this thing at 100% speed. I want to see what happens before I connect any of my precious model trains to it, which I'm still not convinced is a good idea. So I'm going to find something I can hide behind, I'm going to connect it up to my controller and try it at 50% speed to make sure those weights aren't going to fly off again. And then we'll ramp it up to 100 and see what happens. This is going to be frightening, but it should be fun. Let's try it. Right, I've decided I'm hiding behind this chair just to protect me from any shrapnel which might come off that thing. As you can see, I've weighed it down with two big bags of weights because the plate, the dinner plate that sits on top, isn't 100% balanced and it does jerk around, it resonates at certain frequencies. If there was any doubt as to how dodgy this setup is, as you can see, I've got crocodile leads leading from my train controller to the unit itself, which is coupled up with some crocodile leads, and I've used just a, a container to keep them from shorting together. This is going to be frightening, I think, and I do fear for my, well, lower body, which isn't covered by the chair. But let's give this a try. Let's get it up to 50% speed. I mean, I've done this before. One of the weights came off and nearly killed me. But hopefully, now that I've taped them down, that won't happen again. Right, wish me luck. Here we go, 50% speed. All right, speeding up slowly. It's shaking. All right, and it's sort of recovered now. There we go. So it's it's up to speed at 50%. Nothing's coming off. Right, 100%, here we go. No, that's not good. Oh, 
All right, it's handling it. All right, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. Wow. That speed was crazy. But it is slowing down very gradually, which is good at least. That's what we want. <laughs> all right, it works. It feels dreadfully unsafe. The thing was shaking all over the place. I'm glad I was behind the chair, but it seemed to work. Right, let's move on to the next phase then and maybe couple up a locomotive to this. <laughs> what a bad idea that seems. Right then, I might regret this, but we have Hornby Mallard on the rolling road, connected in parallel with the controller and the ridiculous flywheel here. Let's see how this works. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fairly suddenly speed this up to 50% speed. So I've got the controller on now. The controller actually outputs low voltage as soon as you turn it on, so the flywheel actually starts to spin, which is pretty interesting. So let's suddenly turn the controller up to 50% speed and see if the loco behaves as though it were much bigger. Does it speed up immediately or does it speed up a little bit more gradually? Let's find out. Right, let's shove it up to 50% speed. Yeah, there's definitely some gradual speeding up there. Just let the flywheel come to speed. There we are, it's still speeding up. It took it that long to get to that speed. Okay, so next I'm gonna literally just cut power from the controller so that the controller is not putting out any more power. Let's do that. Ready, now. All right, so now all the energy is coming from the flywheel and the loco is decelerating really gradually. Look at that. Wow. And the flywheel comes to a stop. That is quite impressive. So we've got inertia. We are simulating inertia in a little tiny model. Let's try that again. Ready? Let's go backwards this time. Turn the controller on, ramp it up. There we are. And it acts as kind of like a throttle look. So I can speed it up to say 50% speed. And then let's say I want to close the regulator. We'll slow down a little bit. No, let's give it a bit more regulator. Give it a bit more. You can keep giving it some building up the speed, it does behave much more like a real loco. That is awesome. And then let's say we want to cut it out, turn the controller right down, and the thing decelerates gently. Look at that. Let me cut the power entirely just so that we know. Look at that. Came to a nice gradual halt. That is pretty awesome. Also, another thing I've just figured out that I can do is if I get it going, let's say get it going backwards, I can even simulate braking to a degree. What I can do is, I can turn the controller down to zero, like so, and then I can just switch it over to the other direction, and that kills the speed for some reason. Maybe the controller passes the current instead of the loco, but that is pretty interesting. So with that massive flywheel motor connected up in parallel, the locos actually handle much more like a realistic machine with a lot more weight to them. So why does this work? Well, it's kind of due to the way that motors work. So as you know, if we put electrical energy into an electric motor, we get motion out, we get rotation. But motors also work in the opposite way. So if we put rotation into a motor, we actually get power back out. And this is actually how some power stations work. Electric Mountain is one of them. So in the night when electricity is cheap, they put electricity into their motors and pump water up into a reservoir up high. Then when electricity is needed, when the demand is high, they let that water run using gravity back through the same turbines, through the same motors and generate that power back. And that's what's happening here. So when I first turn up the power supply, when I first turn up the model train controller, that huge motor gobbles up most of the current because it's accelerating this big heavy flywheel, which means there's not very much current left over for Mallard. And so Mallard speeds up quite slowly. As soon as that flywheel reaches its maximum speed, the motor uses much less current and so more of it can go into Mallard. In other words, we've put energy into that flywheel. We've put kinetic energy into that flywheel and it keeps that energy as it keeps spinning. The interesting part is when we cut the power because then there's no more power coming out of the controller. 
That energy from the flywheel is put back down into the motor, generated back into electricity and put through the locomotive. And as the flywheel gradually slows down, the voltage gradually lowers as well and the loco slows down gradually. We can also demonstrate the way that the energy is taken out of the flywheel because I can run the experiment twice, I filmed it twice. The flywheel on the left has no loco connected to it, so when I cut off the controller, it's open circuit, there's no current flowing, it's not able to generate any power. The flywheel on the right has the loco connected to it, which means when I cut the power, it is generating electricity for the locomotive, i.e. energy is being taken out of the flywheel to power the loco. So here we go then, let's cut the controller now and see how these slow down. The flywheel on the left is slowing down purely due to friction and air resistance. There is no electrical factor there going on at all. Okay, loco one's just stopped. There, there we go. And that's one without the loco coupled. So you could see how much longer that took. So the difference is clear. You can clearly see that the flywheel on the right was actually generating power for the loco, which is quite amazing. So it works. Now we have to get the loco onto the track with some coaches and see how this actually performs. Seems to work pretty well. All right, let's do this then. So we've got mallard and coaches hooked up to the flywheel. Bear in mind then, when I turn up this controller, we're storing energy, a bit like a capacitor over there in that flywheel, which means that it's gobbling up a lot of the energy and the loco will speed up slowly. You will notice though that mallard speeds up quite quickly as I turn it up, and that's because the gauge master is quite a powerful controller. So yeah, even though the motor over there is gobbling up a lot of current, there's still some left over for the loco and so the voltage is able to rise quite quickly. But you will still see some gradual speed up, so let's give this a try, let's give it some direction. Uh, the flywheel has stalled so it's not moving right now. And let's speed this up. Ready? Yeah? Did actually speed up quite slowly there, didn't it? Look at that. How realistic. Oh, just flip the camera around so that you can see. Yeah, it's still speeding up. Yeah, flywheel took a lot longer to reach its speed there. Maybe that's because we've got coaches on. The loco's drawing more current. And now the loco's running quite normally as well as the flywheel, as you can see. Now that is cool. Right, let's cut the power then. Cutting power now. Look at that. Gradual slow stop. Let's have that again, shall we? Let's speed it up again. Let's try slowing down on Gordon's Hill this time, shall we? Look at the state of that. <laughs> okay, let's cut the power then. Oh yes, look at that. Look how gradual that stop is. That is like a DCC quality stop. Right then, let's start this really abruptly. I've got the controller set to 50% speed and I'm just gonna blast it on any second now. Are you ready? Let's see if the loco starts suddenly or gradually accelerates. Here we go. Speeding up. It really is doing it. Look at that. Okay, and cutting the power now. I can't get over how nice and gradual that is. Look at that. That is an awesome stop. There we are, it comes to a stop just as the flywheel slows down. That is awesome. And changes in speed also take ages as well. So if I suddenly ramp it up really high, you see it speeds up slowly, just like if it was on DCC. Right, let's follow it then to a stop, shall we? There we go. Awesome. Well, there you have it then, folks. It works. A way to control model trains as though they were much bigger and heavier than they really are. It works. Not advisable at home, it draws quite a lot of current from the controller. I measured up to an amp, which is about right for the gauge master, but still, you don't want an object spinning around that fast with loose weights on it. It's just a recipe for disaster. But as far as science, science in inverted commas there goes, it's pretty cool. That was a lot of fun. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? Have you ever thought of doing this? Have you ever tried anything like this? Let me know what your thoughts are. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Take it away then, Mallard. Full speed ahead.